All right, welcome to the explanation video for Music for Botany. Um, I'm going to start with the Moroccan part. So, and the way it's notated is the bottom line is the left hand, or I play it with my left hand. The top line, I play with my right hand. And if the note head is on the line, it's just a basic downstroke. So, when you see the note heads above the line, it's an upstroke or you kind of throw it back like this. So when you look at the 5-8 section, you can kind of see like one hand, bum, 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 one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. You can kind of get this pattern going. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, Four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, four, one, four, one, and the right hand part uh, 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 is big movements for the slower, ba, 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 and then and then smaller movements there. So. Okay. Now in the four eight section. <clears throat> The notation changes a little bit. I start using these uh, small note heads. Uh, the idea is still the same thing. Um, there, I want you to focus more on, think about more of the accents that, that are written in. So the 4-8 session goes like this. So if you just think of the accent, the accent should help you if you think if you remember that. Um, finally, in the three eight section, it's a basic horopo. So there's probably thousands of videos of people playing this online. Um, but I'll, so I'll talk a little bit about it though. Notation is, is very similar to the 4-8 section as well. Um, again, I'm only thinking of the accents. And I'm doing, to fill in the gaps, I'm just doing big circles. And, and the slower I go, the bigger motion I have to make. The faster I go, the smaller motion. Okay, so again, 5-8, think about the accents. Here's a 4-8. And then the 3-8. Now the other tricky thing is the the roll notation. You see a little little buzz roll on some of the stems. Um, in the, for the maracas, that's just the sweep motion. So it's kind of that sound. Now this is this can be tricky if you've never played this before. Um, so, but the way to think about it is I'm thinking about kind of leading with maybe my forearm. And my wrist is kind of, it's, it's a whip-like motion. So you can see my wrist is very loose. And I'll play a little closer to the video so you can see. And this is very difficult to do slow. So if you can get a quality sound slow, then when you speed it up, it should be much better. So 
You really have to focus on being loose and coming across your body like this. And then when you speed it up, it's much easier to do. Now in the 5-8 uh, at, at rehearsal D, um, the pattern uh, flips a little bit. So I my right hand is now on the downbeat or your opposite hand, depending on how you're playing it. And, and it, so it goes one, two, three, four, five, 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 one, two, three, four. One, uh, uh, uh. And the left hand sweeps, fill in the gap. So one, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. So now the other using the rolls in the four eight section, and this is uh, let's see about four before I. Um, we're now combining some of the the, the sweeps. So, so you still have the left hand or or that same hand, whichever left or right, depending on how you started it. Um, but now we're incorporating the other hand, and they happen very quick. So. So they have to kind of go like this. And the, the idea or the goal here is to combine them to where they kind of sound like one long sweep, you know? And at the end, I, it's uh, 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 coming down like that. See a little example of that too. Okay, finally in the three eight, uh, we have a sweep, and this one's fairly easy. It's just a and your right hand or your other hand just back and forth and you get to improvise and at the very end you know there's that hemiola uh, make sure to get that hemiolo, regardless of whether you're going to do the 16th note, that thing, um, or the, but there's your chance to shine and hopefully apply a lot of these maraca techniques that we've been doing. So now for the Kashishi part. Now I wrote this as a single line for all the parts and everything below the line, all the note heads below the line are like downstrokes. So, or really more accurately, they're, they're forward strokes. They really should be like that. While every note head above the line is an upstroke or maybe a backstroke.
like that. Now these are going to naturally be weaker, so you're going to need to work on those more. Um, all these are, are usually very easy and loud enough. So you really need to focus on that to, to get that happening. Um, and every note head on the line are just alternating this. And the beads are inside here hitting up against the basket. So um, now one of the things that I uh, that I see a lot of groups will end up doing or, or you know players if they if they're not or less experienced, they'll play the pattern something like this. Now you can hear that my upstrokes, my backstrokes are, are weaker. And part of it, you could see in the video that I'm actually not, you know, the gorge aren't facing my face completely, where this way they are. So the, you really need to rotate those around to get, to get that sound, you know, so. You're really kind of working on, on this flexibility there. If you're not, you're gonna get a weak you're gonna get a weak sound. Now another tricky spot is sometimes when um, when you enter or when the, a player enters, it's not on the downbeat. And I would advise that everyone when they're not playing, is, they keep their instruments like this. So you're ready to go that way or that way. Now let me switch to these guys. Now um, this is the first, uh, the large kashishi are the first instrument to enter on an upstroke. And, uh, and what I do is I actually kind of prepare it by throwing it back first so I can get that nice, solid and strong upstroke. So if, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's kind of how that first part starts. Again, it's one, two, three, Four, one, two, three, three, four. So notice how one, one, three, four. One, two, three, four. So the note just before it, I'm kind of throwing it out up against the, the baskets. But it's, it's just a, it's a prep stroke really. Even though in the score it says tacit there, um, it's okay because you know it, this won't be heard but it, it's necessary in order to get that first strong upstroke. Okay. Another section in a 3-8, again with a large kashishi, um, you have a pattern that's like this. This is kind of one of my favorite ones. It's fun to play, um, but you don't really have time to, to think about this part when it's on the line. You know, and that's because this is just happening, those, those parts are happening too fast. So so it's really, you're, you're constantly rotating, but you need to focus on, on the accents in that spot. Now finally, um, there are sections throughout the piece, usually after the resultant pattern is built up, and the, all the kashishi play what the maraca part was playing. So the first time this happens is at rehearsal D. And, and in that case, the kashishi parts end up, uh, uh, you play in the same manner that you would the maracas. 
Now, uh, and I notated this by splitting the stems. So anytime that happens in the kashishi part, when the stems are split, you, you need to play them like the maracas. And, and you can see in the maraca part, it's, the stems are split too. So uh, there's a consistency there that if, if you're not sure, that's what that means. Um, but the, the difference here is that we, got, we have a gourd on the bottom. So when we do our downstrokes, in the 5-8, we don't hear an upstroke as much. So this really emphasizes those accents that I was uh, with the maraca part that I was suggesting that you think about. Um, and um, and so the maraca player at this point should be able to possibly teach the kashishi parts. Um, and I also suggest maybe the kashishi players actually learn to play maracas. Um, that way you can. You know, if anybody's ever absent, you could just plug them in. Um, now for the 4-8 section. Again, it, thinking of the accents, of course, these are all in unison, though. So be careful that, um, you know, other people aren't playing something else. Um, and finally, finally, in the 3-8, uh, this one is slightly different in that you have, um, you have the two different Haropa patterns going. So one is like the 6-8 Haropa. So if you think like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, kind of like a triplet feel. While the other one, I actually think of it in three, four. So uh, one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. And if you listen to a lot of the the music, you'll notice, like especially in the bass, uh, like the bass part or the the upright bass part, they're they're also kind of helping to emphasize that. Uh, that different feel as well. So that should cover just about everything. So good luck. I'm Jeremy Muller, and thank you for watching. Music for Botany exists as an ensemble version and a solo version. You can find the scores through Bakovich Music Publications. And to learn more about me and other works I have, please visit my website at jeremymuller.com.